police now have extra help to deal with the stresses of the job. As Sarah Allen reports, the new help could lead to other departments following suit. Yes, Lexi. Oh, that's a good girl. Thank you. Seven-year-old Cricket and eight-year-old Lexi are a lot like normal dogs. <laughs> that's a good girl. They love being pet. We're doing belly scratches. And being social. But these two canines also have a very important job to do. That's where you were last time. Come on. The Plymouth Police Department partners with Courage Service Dogs to bring in the two therapy labs cricket <laughs> every week as a huge advocate of officer wellness i thought that would probably be a really um, fun thing to bring into the police department or a good thing to bring in um, to help our officers with their stress and anxiety and just um, with everything that we deal with daily cricket and lexi have specialized training in ptsd they pick up on anxious cues and offer what they can to help whether that be a paw on your lap or a nuzzle to your face or hands if your hands are over your face or you're kind of shaking they'll kind of break it up by putting their nose in in between your hands or you know just a little lick to kind of bring your mind out of whatever you're kind of going through in that moment. Go say hi. The furry visitors spend six hours a time interacting with officers and other staff. We're going to kind of have them in one room together and staff can kind of come in when they have a break or when they need some companionship or a little snuggle or want to throw a ball. The caring canines provide comfort to officers that sometimes see the worst side of humanity. You see things that you're not normally used to and you got to kind of you know, hold it in and go to the next call. Officers are sworn to serve and protect, Hi. but taking a pause for themselves is also important. It's important to take care of your mental health and yourself as well so we can better take care of others. I think animals are one of the best way to do that. In Plymouth, Sarah Allen, CCX News. Officer Sarah Clay says other police departments have contacted Plymouth with interest in the therapy dog program. Prosecutors have dismissed a murder charge against a Minneapolis man in connection with a fatal Brooklyn Park shooting. Benjamin Richardson was released from police custody this week. In court records, Hennepin County prosecutors wrote that there was, quote, insufficient evidence to prove their case at trial. Law enforcement arrested him in Virginia this January. Investigators had previously charged him for the June 2021 fatal shooting of Alamin Shabazz outside of the Nice family African market. There is good news for families affected by storm damage. The Maple Grove Yard Waste site is waiving its brush size limit. You can now bring in brush up to 24 inches in diameter free of charge. Craig Forey brought a truckload to the lot this week. He says about half of his load came from the storm Wednesday evening. For Forey, the brush site is a valuable resource year-round. It's a great resource, uh, you know, for the citizens of Dayton that don't have to pay to come in here. You know, I just wonder what, uh, where all this stuff would be going if there wasn't this facility. We've had a few people say, you know, I lost a couple of limbs in the storm and this is it. And I mean, to me, it's like you lost a lot of limbs in the storm because this is a big load. To bring in your brush free of charge, you need to show your driver's license or other proof of residency. That offer runs through August 1st. Your input is needed to plan a major West Metro bike trail. The planned Canadian Pacific Rail Regional Trail would connect Crystal to Bloomington when completed in several years. Three Rivers Park District officials want input on the segment that would link the Loose Line Regional Trail in Golden Valley with the Cedar Lake Regional Trail in St. Louis Park. Yes, they're used to using city trails. This is a regional trail, which is more of a uh, think of it more as a, as a highway, if you will. Do they want to be able to bike or walk to shopping, to a church, to, li to a library? What are the, some of the destinations that, that, that they're interested in, in, in getting to via trails? You can find a link to the online feedback form and interactive map at ccxmedia.org. Wildflowers are popping at local park reserves. In today's weekend showcase, photojournalist Dustin Scholl takes us to one of the best places to view them, Crowhassen Park Reserve. This is really a hidden gem. If you're looking for more of a quiet, solitude experience, this is where you come. This is where I come to release, let go, really feel like nature is surrounding me because there are places you can be out here and not see 
another person. You hear the birds, you hear the insects, you see the grass movement, you see the pollinators, the flowers, and I feel like there's just something transformative about that. This is white prairie clover. This is called golden aster. Now that's flowering spurge. It just kind of adds these little white fireworks throughout the prairie. This is the butterfly weed, which the caterpillars can also feed on and is an important nectar source for the butterflies as well. Another really fun one is this purple prairie clover. Pretty dainty, but if you look closely, you can see like it gets these little tufts of orange. There's never a bad time to come out to Crowhassan. Here we have the largest, oldest restored prairie complex in Hennepin County, which is amazing. You can hop on 94 and be here, and we're not that far from Rogers. And so to have that primitive feel to it is really cool, and it's always changing. It's got so many different kinds of flowers. I was here earlier in the spring and now it's just all in bloom. It's wonderful, all of the wildflowers. So really a mix of different colors. Now we're getting the yellow cone flowers. You got purple prairie clover going. You got white with the mints and there's a white prairie clover as well. And then these oranges of the butterfly milkweed pop. And that's like, you know, the big bright color that you really find out in the prairie. These trails are, are nice and easy to navigate, but that sandy soil just really kind of creates a different experience. No sticker needed, no fees for parking here. If you just want to come out and hike, that's a completely free activity. To have that right in Hennepin County, only a short drive away from the metro area is really rare. It's continually showing me something new. At Crowhassen, there are one mile and three mile loops to view the wildflowers. It's been a busy week of soccer at the big USA Cup tournament in Blaine. Pool play in all age divisions wrapped up Thursday night. 14 and under girls pool play featuring Maple Brook from Maple Grove Brooklyn Park and White facing off with IPNUFC of Illinois. First half off a nice through ball. Maple Brook goalie Lena Silman makes a big stop on Emily Wozniewski to keep the match scoreless. But IPNUFC gets on the scoreboard a few minutes later. Abby Leslie crosses the ball in front of the Maple Brook net and Brooke Butler taps it in for a goal. It's a one to nothing score at halftime. No more scoring until late in the match when Leslie chips a shot deep into the far corner of the Maple Brook net. The Illinois based team wins their third straight game of the cup, 2-0 the final. The tournament wraps up Saturday at the National Sports Center in Blaine. Official summer workouts are winding down for high school teams with all of them wrapping up by the end of the month. We spent part of a warm July day cooling off with a local girls hockey team. The Maple Grove girls hockey program lost some good talent to graduation from their conference winning section runner up team last winter. That's why summer training sessions like these are so important for this year's Crimson team. Because it gets an opportunity, especially with the new kids who are coming up from the the U15 program from the youth program, they get integrated with us. We've got kids who played JV last year, last next uh, last year who are trying to you know get on that varsity team, and so it just gives our and then gives our new captains an opportunity to kind of uh, broaden their wings with uh, being their leadership. I think it's really important. I like that it gives us a chance to like get a head start to start developing like even before the season. We train three days a week, and a lot of us do like outside stuff, which helps a lot especially to build relationships with those younger girls coming up in their first year of high school and get to know them before the season starts, it really helps a lot. Players in all position groups work on skill development and the team also gets a chance weekly to scrimmage against other opponents. On this day, it's been Ild St. Margaret. It's a good gauge for the players to see where they are at individually and as a team. The scrimmages are great, especially since we can see what, what it's like in a game. And I think we've came a long ways from the start of the summer, the scrimmages, and we've already started to grow. So if we keep that going in the season, we'll be great. That gives the kids an opportunity to really see where they're at against other varsity teams and other varsity players, and then they can make their decision if they're going to come up to the high school or not. The first official practices for girls hockey teams in Minnesota won't be until October 30th, with games getting underway two weeks later. It's time for our weekly CCX fishing segment. This week, Terry Tuma offers some tips on hooking largemouth bass under tough bite conditions. I just got off the lake fishing largemouth bass with a little bit of a tougher bite. And that tougher bite, I opt to go to the 
wacky worm, and the wacky worm was quite productive, but I thought I should have a little bit more action, so I went to a Ned rig. And many people ask, what is a Ned rig? How do you fish it? Well, a Ned rig is really a half moon jig itself, if you will. It's actually a Ned rig jig, and then you can use any pieces of plastic that are intended for this type of fishing. I use a little general power bait, if you will, max scent, and then all you do is just take that plastic and just hook it right into the into the hook, threading it all the way up, and then just thread it all the way to the, itself. It's got a keeper to hold your plastic and has to hang plastic, but extremely, extremely productive. It outproduced the wacky worm. So here again too, and you can fish it uh, different ways. Let it drop to the bottom, lift, drop, slow retrieve, swim it back to the boat, but a very, very good tool to use. I use 10 pound test line with a spinning rod of the 10 pound test line is fluorocarbon with a spinning rod, but a great tool. I would advise anybody to give it a try. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media. Yeah, it's so sad. <laughs> it's not.